Okay, I believe we are ready to go. Good morning, everyone. This is Ana Armenta. I'm your Arizona Racing Commission Secretary. Um, today is September 28th, 2023, the 715th Arizona Racing Commission regular meeting taking place via Google Meets, and I will do the roll call. Chair Coolidge? Present. Vice Chair Olson? Present. Commissioner French Contreras? Here. Commissioner York? Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. It is now 1014 AM, and it's all yours, Chair. Thank you, ma'am. I'll call to order the 715th Arizona Racing Commission meeting of Thursday, September 28th, 2023, excuse me, jumping into action items. Uh, the first is hearing on advanced deposit wagering permits, uh, and I'll hand it off to the Arizona Department of Racing. Get a quick update here. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did supply the investigative reports for all three ADWs. Uh, they were included in your packet. Uh, the analysis does, sh does show that they're all suitable um, and each is uh, ready for renewal, uh, permit renewal. Uh, the department does recommend the ADW permit uh, renewal for items B1A, B1B, and B1C. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Commissioner York. Yes, good morning. I just had a couple of questions on uh, the questions apply to all three. So this is for permit year 2022, 2023 and 2024. I I just find that a little confusing given that we're in October of 2023, but there was probably something I'm not aware of. So maybe you could tell me. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, uh, Commissioner York, can you hear me? Yes. All right, this is Director Casillas. Um, the reason for this is that um, the ADWs had not been put on the agenda previously because uh, the, the new compact and uh, the event wagering statutes that came into play in 21 and standing up uh, event wagering fantasy sport the ADWs had a requirement to uh, geofence tribal lands, and it's taken some time to get them to that point. Uh, we're almost there, so we decided that uh, it's time to put their uh, renewal permit on, on the agenda. Okay, so, and this is also calendar year, not fiscal year. That's correct. Okay, and then for each of the permittees, my understanding is that they have to have a contract with a racetrack permittee. In the instance of each of these, who are they tied to? Go ahead, Brian. Uh, Commissioner York, uh, TVG and Express Bet are tied with Turf Paradise. Inspires is with uh, Reed. Okay, so does item B2 play into this discussion at all? I can't see it. Uh, clarification discuss confirming. This is operation. Yes, Commissioner, it, it does play into B2. Okay, okay. so I, I, I was just wondering out the gate if it didn't make more sense to have this discussion, item B2 first. It would just help me and maybe the other commissioners to have more context for the ADW permits.
I, I agree, Commissioner, and uh, it's up to Chairman Coolidge if he wants to. Okay. Right. I don't. I don't have an opinion with that. If, can everyone mute their phones, please? If you're not speaking, because we're getting some feedback there. Uh, yeah, Commissioner York, I don't have a, an issue swapping for B2 first, if, if that helps you. I think it might. I mean, I won't know until I hear what. So let's let's go ahead and just jump down to action item B2, limited event wagering operator. Um, <clears throat> we also have some people who are signed up to speak on this. Uh, Mr. M. Bornoni, you want to go ahead and give us your spiel? Yes, thank you. Uh, three minutes, sir, unless you need more. That will be fine. Uh, good morning, Chairman Coolidge and Commissioners. This is Brian Imbornoni. I would like to comment briefly on item uh, B2. Uh, as long as Turf Paradise holds a racing permit, there are no grounds for an enforcement action against limited event wagering operators. Uh, the provisions of ARS 5-1307A are crystal clear. They allow an event wagering operator to partner with a racetrack enclosure or additional wagering facility, quote, that holds a permit, unquote. Turf Paradise holds a permit and is entitled to due process rights before that could be revoked. Uh, those rights are provided by uh, Regulation 19-2-12B2 uh, and include a 30-day uh, written notice of a uh, permit revocation hearing. Uh, continuing with the statute, ARS 5-1307C provides in mandatory language that the department shall issue a limited event wagering license if the conditions are met. And those conditions are compliance with the rules, a current license, no pending investigation, and the payment of fees. Uh, because all of the statutory conditions have been met, there are no grounds for an enforcement action. It makes sense for the division to be diligent about these issues, but the answer is provided in black and white in the statutes. As long as Turf Paradise holds its permit, there are no grounds for an enforcement action against limited event wagering operators. Thank you. Commissioner York, do you have any updates on that? Just a quick question. So in the in the rules, there's a definition of an LEWO, and then there's also a definition of an AWD. So I'm assuming that we're these ADWs are considered LEWOs. I was just thinking they were two separate things, but are they the same thing, even though there's two separate definitions? If you're asking me, I don't have the answer to that. No, no, I'm I'm just, I'm asking the department, any our attorney, anybody who can answer. Thank you. Commissioner York, I recommend that we go into executive session. Okay, I move that we move into executive session. Second. I have a thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner York and a second by Chair Coolidge. Um, I will I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge. Yes. Vice Chair Olson. Uh, I'm going to abstain from this uh, vote and action item. Thank you. Commissioner French Contreras. Yes. Commissioner York. Yes. With a total of three yeses and one no, thank you. That motion passes and we will move to executive session. Thank you.
Oh, for what? Please mute your phone, please. Mute your phone. Yes. Answer questions.
Madam Secretary, go ahead and call a roll when you see the rest of the commissioners, please. Looks like we're all back in. Um, I will do the roll call. Chair Coolidge? Present. Vice Chair Olson? Present. Commissioner French Contreras? Here. Commissioner York? Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. It is 1042 AM and the floor is yours. Thank you. Just as a reminder, we are coming back to uh, action item B2, limited event wagering operator clarification. One thing I didn't uh, put across the bow was uh, opening it up to the department should they have any additional updates. Mr. Duncan, do you have anything that you'd like to add to this line item or are we get to proceed? Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything to add. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioners York or French, do you have anything you'd like to add for this one? Uh, no, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, not for this Chairman. one. Thank you. Mr. Author, I see you raising your hand on B1 and B2. Is that correct? Well, I'm sure I would talk about both, but I'd be glad to just address B2 at this time. Go ahead, sir. Um, as, as, uh, as much as it may surprise you um, that I would agree with Mr. Imbernoni, um, I agree with Mr. Imbernoni that the, uh, with respect to Arizona Downs, we have a permit and there's no reason to take away the limited event wagering operator permit that we have up at the track. I'm not sure why this uh, uh, entry is on the agenda, but uh, in any event, um, notwithstanding our the current um, litigation that we are undertaking with the Office of Administrative Hearings, um, we have a permit and uh, we are operating a limited event wagering uh, up at the uh, track and there's no reason nor right for the division to take that away for the reasons and the statutes and the regulations cited by Mr. Imbernoni. Thank you. Appreciate it, sir. Unless uh, any of my commissioners have any instructions for attorneys on this matter or any other adjustments, I'm going to move back to B1. I'm good. Thank you. So we'll move back to action item B1, hearing on advanced wagering uh, deposits uh, as those move forward. I'll open it back up for my commissioners before I make a motion. Chair Coolidge, does it make sense to have any of the stakeholders speak and give us updates or do you want to wait for information reports? Would it help anything here as far as our action? I do see Mr. Author Sands raised. Yes, I I, uh, I have uh, on this particular item and, and basically every item, um, we at Arizona Downs are somewhat, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out who gets what and why. Um, it, apparently there's three contracts <laughs> potentially under invest under consideration, two of which pay money to turf paradise and we've all uh witnessed the last several months announcements and reports and uh publications from mr sims saying that turf paradise is closing and turf paradise will not run again and turf paradise will not race again and turf paradise although a very nice track uh, for mr sims he's decided to move on and turf paradise is closed or will be closed. And so the, the question, uh, the, the normal response to that would be, well, let's try to find the other tracks that will be running and want to run and plan to run 
and the income generated by the ADWs should be assigned to them as well as the contracts for those uh, particular ADWs at a minimum, the two assigned to Turf Paradise and uh, maybe even the one assigned to Rito, to, although I don't know anything about that contract. So uh, has there been some investigation, discussion, or questions of the Turf Paradise group as to what, what are they doing and why would the commission decide to provide any income whatsoever to a track that's closed? And, uh, and why wouldn't they uh, choose not to approve those particular contracts until the question of Turf Paradise's demise or non-demise is resolved? Um, we heard actually yesterday that some guy rode in at the cavalry and was going to rescue Turf Paradise. And they were going to keep the OTBs running and uh, and I just wonder has the commission vetted this person has anybody considered does he need a a permit or does he not need a permit is it going to be under Durf Paradise's permit what is going on because all we hear is that um, Turf Paradise is closing and, and Jerry has decided to retire to his place in California in that event Likewise, the OTB system and shouldn't. Seconds. I'm sorry, the OTB system shouldn't be maintained with Turf Paradise, but it should be directed over to Arizona Downs, which has a track and plans to run. So, these are issues that are just you folks on the commission need to figure this out, and Thanks, Mr. Sir. Casillas needs to investigate. Thank, Thank you. you Appreciate it. Not a uh, not a traditional Arizona Racing Commission meeting without both tracks going against each other as always. So Mr. Sims, I'm gonna allocate three minutes for you as well. Sir, you're on mute, just FYI. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to go against anybody. I'm just, uh, uh, it's, it's interesting that it comes my way, uh, each of these meetings. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I had several buyers for the track and I chose the buyer that I'm signed an agreement and moving ahead with uh, because he plans to run racing. He's very much an enthusiast, wants to have racing, is not interested in uh, putting data centers on the property. He wants racing. He has met with the racing, com um, with the racing uh, HBPA board and uh, they seem very happy about him coming in and running racing. And uh, I'm really happy. And like I say, I chose him because he's going to run racing. I want to save the industry, the jobs. Uh, and, and that's why I, I could have even gotten perhaps more money with one of the other buyers. But I decided to make the deal with this buyer because I felt good that everything he said and he was going to move forward with. And then he was vetted by the uh, uh, horseman, like I say. He met with him the other evening. Uh, with their management and then also uh, with their entire board yesterday and everybody seems good about it so we want to have a business that he can walk into that has advanced deposit wagering has otbs um, he's buying a going concern and uh, chairman and, and commissioners this is what is going to save racing and like i say i did this to do that i did not want to see all those people unemployed and so we shouldn't be picked on. We ought to be thanked uh, to this gentleman for coming in and, and going to save racing in the state. So uh, anyway, I hope that clarifies. Thank you for the time. Thank you, sir. Lastly, Mr. Nolan, go ahead, sir. A couple minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I guess this item will address both issues. I signed up for the number D2, but my concern is with the sentence can uh in the event commercial racetracks do not conduct live race meetings and as mr ambernoni and, uh, and on the same thought of mr arthur is i'd like to cite ars title five chapter one um five dash one ten d if the commission determines that an emergency has obligated 
or may obligate a permittee to discontinue racing at a location. The commission may authorize the permittee to transfer racing for those number of days lost to any other location. One question would be, has that occurred? Has there a request to have uh, this emergency to not obligate him to his three-year permit? Here's the narrative. Turf Paradise Racing applied and accepted a permit from the Arizona Racing Commission at the recommendation of the Arizona Department of Racing, a division of the Department of Gaming for a three-year term. Fiscal years concluding June 30th, 2024. Turf Paradise Racing derived the benefits associated with the permit, and now the Department of Racing and Division, a division of the Department of Gaming and the state of Arizona should obligate Turf Paradise Racing to fulfill its obligation under the permit, meaning hold a racing meeting for the duration of the permit term. Urge the commission to authorize and direct the attorney general to determine whether legal action should be taken against Turf Paradise Racing to specifically enforce its obligation to hold a racing meet and to also explore whether licensees have a separate claim for the financial damages we have and will sustain by reason Mr. Sims and Turf Paradise Racing is failing in refusal of its legal obligation. There's some concerns out here. This deal, your decisions deal with thousands of people's $100 million industry, and there is an obligation. We can't wish that this new man, because we've seen in the past six months, the Monarch Arizona Dells fell through. The Watson, the Sims deal fell through. This is a wonderful gesture, but we need it to go forward now with direction Sorry. under the regulatory powers in order to protect the racing participants and the wagering public. I thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sim, uh, Mike is still live. Mr. Author, I'll give you one more minute just to put a bow on it. Yeah, I, I, um, I resent the implication that the only reason Arizona Down speaks up is to do something that is going to hurt uh, Turf Paradise. I hear that from the, the chairman constantly, and it's, it's, uh, it's absurd. Uh, we at Arizona Downs would be glad to see the OTB system flourish. We'd be glad to see the uh, limited event wagering operator system flourish. But we're just suggesting that uh, there's a possibility that we don't ever see racing again. And that in the meantime, the money that should go to an operator of a track uh, money should be going to a future operator of the track and not to somebody who's going to shut down and has already told us they're going to shut down. If you're telling, if, if Mr. Sims is telling us yesterday he found another buyer who wants to be a horse track when the guy that dropped it was going to use it as a, a real estate project, everybody that knows the real estate knows that it's worth two or three times more as re on real estate than it is as a horse track. So there's something, there's just an investigation not to be conducted and it's irritating to us that we always get left out when, uh, when, these, when these folks write in and say, oh, we're gonna turn, we're gonna turn Turf Paradise around. We'd Thank love you, to sir. see it happen, but you have a job, commissioners, and I hope you do it. Thank you. So just as, as follow up to that, you know, what I have heard implied is that there is no due diligence being done on the new uh, buyer. The buyer is still going to have to go and do all the protocols and the diligence with any track as they would be. They can't just come in and keep the lights on and do everything that they need to do. From what I've been told, the buyer has sat down with the AZHBPA uh, for multiple hours and, and communicated with them, gotten their uh, approvals and are trying to do everything that they can do. Doesn't seem to me like the H AZH BPA, um, not in a bad way, but is not an easy group to go and dupe to see if they would get a limited uh, extension while they do the diligence on an investment uh, such as the one that I'm sure Arizona Downs did and, and Turf Paradise is doing uh, for the diligence on any acquisition made there. 
Additionally, the HBPA has not just single-handedly approved this forever. They've granted it long enough to where this potential buyer can go and do the diligence that they need to get done. Uh, as far as the OTBs go, what I'm referring to is the same battle that we hear day in and day out. So I apologize if, if that was misconstrued, but the uh, the frustrations are real, at least on my part. I won't uh, I won't speak for the rest of the commissioners there. So as far as that goes, do we have any other um, comments from my commissioners before we move forward on anything, or do we want to identify them individually? Nothing further for me. Okay, that said, I'll move that we approve action item one A through C. Candace French Contreras, I second that motion. Thank you. I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner French Contreras. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Uh, to the extent B1 and 2 are related, I'll abstain. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of three yeses and one abstain, thank you. That motion passes. Okay, we'll jump down to B3, simulcast agreements pursuant to ARS 5-112U. Uh, Mr. Duncan, you want to give any updates as far as these agreements go? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I do not have any updates on uh, these agreements. Okay, Mr. Yother, I see your hand raised. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Coolidge and uh, commissioners, this is Lloyd Yother, Arizona HBPA and AQRA uh, hyphen B. Uh, I'm the president of both organizations. <laughs> I'd like to give you a statement and then elaborate a little bit where we're at with uh, what's transpired so far on this, this uh, commission meeting. The Arizona HBPA has met with the new prospective owner for Turf Paradise, uh, Mr. Frank Nicken, Nickens, N-I-C-K-E-N-S, and would like to extend our approval for the current simulcast signal firm from October 1 through November the 12th, an additional 43 days in order to give all stakeholders time to do their due diligence going forward. Uh, I again, uh, we're looking to save live racing in Arizona, and that's that's my primary purpose, and that's what I was like the president of both these organizations for. And I'm doing my utmost to do whatever is possible. And and a lot of people have to maybe understand that this guy came forth on on a week ago Wednesday. Uh, I do not know Mr. Dickens. Have no connections to Mr. Dickens, and uh, all I can go on is what he has discussed with the the uh, uh, contract group uh, with the HPPA. Uh, we met with him on Tuesday for several hours uh, discussing what the future and what his vision might be going forward. And then we met with the, uh, our, our, we called a board meeting on uh, uh, yesterday evening or afternoon and met with our board and asked uh, Mr. Frank Nickens to come in and meet with our board and tell us what his vision is for the racetrack going forward. This only happened in the last three or four days. So nobody's done anything. I mean, I have no idea where we're at at this point in time, but it's the only olive branch, if you will, that we could grab a hold of to keep the OTBs open and running, keep the, the, uh, the potential for purse monies uh, coming into the, uh, to the Arizona Horsemen for future racing wherever it may be. Uh, we, we, all we're looking for is someone to run live racing in the state of Arizona and to save, and to, to save the industry. With that, I will uh, thank you for your time and uh, that's my statement. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Any of my commissioners have questions on the simulcast agreements? No, thank you, no. Chairman. 
Okay, I'll move that we approve Turf Paradises 1 through 4 simulcast agreements pursuant to ARS 5 112 u Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner York. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. Driving down to 4A. Um, Simulcast horse racing import signals pursuant to the IHA section 300-4A3. Mr. Duncan, any updates as far as the pending issues on these? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I do have an update on uh, these items. Um, uh, last night, I did send all the commissioners uh, a copy of the signed simulcast agreement uh, that Mr. Yoder was talking about um, for Turf Paradise and the HPPA. Uh, that extends the simulcast through uh, November 12th. Uh, so with that being said, Mr. Chairman, under BA1 um, through three, those items are now complete. Item four is still missing the uh, host commission and the host horseman. Thank you, sir. As far as the HPPA goes, I hope that it will help do your diligence and in, in provide stability for the industry. This is the only reason why at least myself, uh, and I can't speak for the other commissioners, is, is so interested in hoping we can keep the lights on, particularly for a lot of the people that are impacted in the OTB industry, as well as the HBPA. So, uh, and, and I also want to reinforce a little bit as far as Arizona Downs goes, that I'll be your biggest cheerleader if we can figure out the finances and, and be able to turn the lights back on over there. So. Should that be available? That's something that I'm happy to work with y'all as well to make sure that we keep the, the families here and the employees here and, and turn the OTBs back on. So that said, I'll move that we approve. Thank for, you. Thank you, Mr. Coolidge. Appreciate yes, that. 4A, one through three. Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner French Contreras, I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. I'll move that we conditionally approve 4A4, contingent that the track uh, receive all the prerequisite in information and submit that to the department and also leave it to the department for a final approval so the track does not see delay. Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner York. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes with conditional approval. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'll open it up to the C1 track safety report if Dr. Gale has any updates on her end. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Chair Coolidge and uh, commissioners. At this time, I have no new updates. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have a budget report from the department? Yes. Hi, so I'm presenting the cash budget as of 831 of 23. We have a cash balance of $2,675,567. Um, our cash spent as of August is $328,000. We have projected expenses through the, um, the fiscal year of $2 million. Also, we have the um, Breeders Award, 250,000 per statute. Our RWA regulatory rec um, waging assessment is 134,184. Um, we have dark days assessments of 13,825. Um, our license fees of boxing is $6,000 and $6,646. And our racing is $668. 
go down to our payroll for the year, um, $207,000. That includes our, I mean, which is also separate, our contract racing. I mean, excuse me, our contract services, our um, temporary staff is 5,905. We have our legal costs up to date is 78,193. Um, all other um, charges is $37,000. So our appropriation again for FY24 is $2,330,700. And so here's a graph that shows you our encumbered in the light purple and what we spent uh, as of August 31st. Okay. And then our last slide is our race and cash balance. As you can see, they're almost up to um, 300,000, um, what they've spent as of August 31st as well. That's our um, budget update. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate the update. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Gessman, do you have an update on the International Horse Racing Integrity Act? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Coolidge and Commissioners Leroy Gessman, the National HBPA. Um, the long awaited date of October 4th is just around the corner next Wednesday. That will be our hearing at the fifth district appeals court uh, on the HISA issue. Uh, our side and I'm sure HISA's side as well, both probably feel very good about their position, but our position our side feels very good about their position and their arguments that will be presented next Wednesday. Uh, if I can find a link, I, I think that you can go to a link and listen to that, but I'm still working on those details. I will get that out if it's possible. Also, I just wanted to report that uh, on Tuesday, Representative Clay Higgins from Louisiana dropped a bill in the uh, House of Representatives in Washington uh, called the Racehorse Health and Safety Act. The Racehorse Health and Safety Act would establish an interstate compact to develop nationwide rules governing medication, racetrack safety for horse racing that would replace HISA and put it back in the control of the commissions and uh, or the Department of Racing and Department of Racing. Uh, we're very excited about the possibilities of this bill. And uh, I'm sure we will be asking for a lot of support to get a hold of the Arizona representatives and support this bill. As, as the thing progresses and goes through committees, I will get information out on who we need to contact to everybody. Uh, any questions from the commissioners? If not, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the time. We'll drop down to C4 permittee reports, American Greyhound Racing. I'm Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Aaron Feinberg for American Greyhound Racing, and uh, we have no update this month. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Arizona Downs. Chairman Coolidge and commissioners, it's author. Um, no, no big update. We, we, and we appreciate your comments, Chairman Coolidge, on helping us survive. It's uh, obviously we can't do it without an OTB network, and when it, as I understand, as it when it came up yesterday during the HBPA meeting, I was told that uh, Mr. Yother said, even if he gave us the signal, Director Casillas told him he would not approve that. So I, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing when I'm done here, Mr. Casillas' res response to that. But uh, that's in our opinion, there is no such statute. Um, so that that's one thing. I mean, and, and we need to go, we need to consider con enforcing the statute that is on the books that says each track gets its signal during its meet and only during its meet. So uh, 
And, and having said that, I, you know, we congratulate Turf Paradise on on finding this buyer, a guy that nobody knew of a week ago who walked in the door and is going to pay hundreds of millions of dollars and had a contract in four days. So uh, I, I'm sure that somebody's going to vet this, and and I'm uh, I have a hunch the vetting won't take very long. So we'll all know uh, how to proceed here. So with that, I don't have uh, anything else to add. Appreciate it, sir. Uh, we'll go to county fairs. This is Dr. Joanne DeFilippo. I'm the chair of the Pima County Fair Horse Racing Commission, newly appointed, actually. And I will tell you, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with the county fairs. So I hope we can report something next month. Appreciate that. And congratulations, question mark. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How about Rito? Turf Paradise. Okay. Mr. Mayor, do you have any comment, Mr. Mayor? Uh, I do, Mr. Sims. Floor is yours. Uh, Chairman uh, Coolidge and uh, Commissioners, um, I had hoped uh, earlier the uh, discussion, earlier in the discussion, uh, Mr. Uh, Youther had referred to Frank, Frank Nickens. And he's one of the two members in partnership that are talking with uh, Mr. Sims about the purchase of uh, Turf Paradise. Mr. Nickens was going to be here, but at the last minute, that wasn't possible. He asked me to read the following. So in the public record. Um, so quoting from what uh, they asked me to read, Turf Paradise LL, he is working towards the purchase of Turf Paradise race course. We plan to keep live race, bring this facility into a new era, horse racing for the benefit of everyone involved. We feel the preservation of such a wonderfully historical facility and the preservation of thousands of jobs that horse racing offers can carry the legacy of Turf Paradise on for another 50 years. We plan to completely redevelop surrounding land, all for the benefit of horse racing. We look forward to a new bright future for everyone at Turf Paradise. It's signed by Richard Moore, CEO of Turf Paradise Land Trust, LLC. Um, the discussions continue with uh, Mr. Sims, as Mr. Yother mentioned, they have uh, met with Mr. Nickens. Uh, the plan is to open a live race meet in early January, and that is what we are all aiming for. I will send a hard copy of what I just read to Mr. Casillas so it's on file with the department and for the availability of the commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it, sir. Uh, Commissioner York, go ahead. Mr. Francia, just a quick clarification. So. Uh, Turf Paradise's Facebook post last night indicated January race meet, which which you've just um, in the statement from Mr. Nickens, it was also indicated. So when you made that statement, when the track made that official statement, it was based on the new buyer. Not There's not an intention for Turf to run in January because the press is running with this and they're making everyone think, there's going to be racing in January and they're not digging deep to really understand if it's going to happen or not. So I just wanted a clarification. Uh, yes, I'm aware of the media's uh, interest in this matter. Uh, it has to do with the new book. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Francia. You're welcome. I, I, I could add something if you'd like. Uh, we've entered into a, uh, a uh, letter of intent uh, a purchase contract 
is being sent this morning. I've seen the final version this morning, and that final purchase and sale agreement is going to the buyer, This, like I say, this morning. Um, I believe that the department has sent him papers for his licensing and permit have been sent to him, I believe, yesterday. So this is moving ahead. And if we got to the end of the time and he wanted to run, I think something could be worked out where um, he leased the track. We'd have to figure out how that would work, but hopefully the department uh, will have enough time to do their due diligence. But the purchase and sale, he's ready to move ahead. He said he can close in 60 days. And uh, so that's, that's how the, the structure of the agreement is for closing in 60 days. Hope that helps. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Thank you. We're going to jump back up to Rito with Mr. Weiss, I assume. Thank you. Sorry, I had it on mute. Um, but I am just going to state that I really am looking forward to next season. Uh, we did run last season. We had an 18-day meet, and it was a packed house literally every single day. Uh, we had eyes on us nationally as we did an experiment. We were initial uh, workout for Stride Safe to uh, help monitor and keep the horses safe. And again, we were uh, looked at nationally and internationally for this test. And it was interesting and something also for the students to get involved in. Um, I'm kind of proud of the internship that we have done with the students. We have dozens of students that have gone through from the university, not just the racetrack program, but also media. And our ex we have ex-students that are running the racing office in New York, uh, Charcoal, chart calling the Kentucky Derby, uh, U.S. rep for Global Tote. I can go on and on, but that's it's it's good because they get experience. We move them around and we find their niche. So looking forward to keeping the industry going. Thank you. Appreciate it. Drop down to 5A, Arizona Counties Racing Association. Arizona County's Quarter Horse Racing Association. Nothing to report at this time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're just hopefully uh, awaiting the process to unfold for the uh, for Turf Paradise and or Arizona Downs or Rodito. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Arizona Thoroughbred Breeders Association. Good morning. This is um, Wendy McCumber. I'm the secretary treasurer of the Arizona Thoroughbred Breeders Association. I just wanted to um, say that we are having our annual uh, horse sale Thursday, October 26 at 2 p.m. at Horseshoe Park in Queen Creek. We've put together a great catalog of yearlings and mares. So we really would ask if you'd please come out and support this great sale. Um, the catalog is currently online at atba.net or there is hard copies available at the office. You're also more than welcome um, to give the ladies in the office a call at 602-942-1310 and they would be happy to mail you a copy. And I also do want to say that, yes, I am a little biased because I think Arizona breads are some of the greatest breeds in the, in the U.S. and they can run anywhere. So yes, we would love for them to run here um, at our home tracks, but we also know that, it, and it's proven that they can run anywhere. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. HBPA. Jockey's Guild. Any of my commission members have anything that uh, they'd like to bring up at future agendas or discussion points for this meeting? Not at this no. time, Chairman. Thank you. Nothing for me, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move to call to the public. list here. Dr. Joanne, are you still with us? I am here. 
Ma'am, why don't you take a couple of minutes? Okay, thank you. First, um, I, I noticed on the agenda, and I'll just clear this up. Uh, by next month's meeting, I do hope to get some answers for you between the Arizona County's Racing Association and the County Fairs reports, because I can see with the Arizona Corporation Commission that there are some issues in regards to the association. So I will try and get that clarified and report to you next month. Okay. Yes, As ma'am. As to call to, thank you, Chair. As to call to the public, good morning, Chair Coolidge, Commissioners, and Director Casillas. My name is Dr. Joanne DeFilippo, and I'm Chair of the Pima County Fair Horse Racing Commission. I come before you today to address three critical items. The first is the posting of the Department of Racing Commission agendas. This commission does post agendas in accordance with Arizona Open Meeting Law, ARS Section 38-431-01C. Namely, that the agenda be posted at least 24 hours prior to the actual meeting. The intent of this statute is to provide the public body and the general public with open notice as is, quote, reasonable, unquote, about material to be covered, discussed, or decided at subject meetings. In past years, the department and the commission posted agendas five days or so prior to the subject commission meetings. Currently, the commission posts agendas only 24 hours prior to the subject meeting taking place. This really is not, this 24 hour notice is, as it's practiced today is simply not adequate to provide the public body with enough quote unquote reasonable time to access and review matters to be discussed or decided. Therefore, I would like to ask the commission to follow parliamentary procedures established by the state of Arizona as well as the Arizona counties, towns, and cities who are also subject to the Arizona open meeting law requirements. Specifically, I'm requesting that you post the agenda publicly, no less than five days preceding the subject meeting and allow for an addendum of agenda items to also be pub posted publicly, not less than 24 hours prior to the subject meeting. As you well know, this is a process that is currently used by all Arizona government entities, including the state of Arizona. In as much as the Arizona Department of Gaming, Racing is a subunit of state government, this commission should not be exempt from following these generally adhered to administrative procedures. I really wish you would take this under consideration because if not, I will ask for further clarification from the Arizona Attorney General's office regarding this. The second issue, issue I want to address is executive session. There are only seven conditions under which an executive session can be authorized. You can see these in ARS 38431.03D. I ask you to please review these conditions because I can see that some of the items that you're requesting to go into executive session do not fall within those guidelines and you could be subject to a violation of Arizona open meeting law. I run several government commissions and I'm very well versed on Arizona open meeting law and the need requirement and authorization for executive session. So I do ask you to please consider that. Third thing, I just really want to remind the Arizona Department of Racing and the Racing Commission that within your roles and responsibilities, providing oversight, accountability, and transparency of horse racing operations in this state. What happens is when you allow, and I'm going to, I'm not addressing any one track in particular, but I'm addressing as a collective whole. When you allow tracks to not file their reports on time, not provide financial statements, grant extensions, which then are not followed through with, what happens is the burden of that negative lack of due diligence and follow through, it basically falls on the backs of the horsemen. And what happens is for many families, you know, this is how they sustain their families. When they go to work, they may not be going Sorry, to an let's, office. Let's add one more minute. Ma'am, I'm going to grant you one more minute. And then we'll thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. What happens is that, you know, they may not be going to an office job or working in a trade industry, but nevertheless, they are working at a job that allows them to put food on the table, sustain their families, etc. So I believe that there needs to be an equal consideration. If horsemen are going to be able, they're going to be held accountable for having to respond to the lack of diligence on the part of some of these horse race tracks providing what they need to do to the commission and to the Department of Racing, then we need to work collectively together to minimize the negative impacts 
on the horse racing industry and the professionals, their families, and the industry at large. And I thank you. I will provide a copy of my comments to the secretary so they can be entered in the record. Thank you, Chair Coolidge. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Nolan, three minutes. Uh, uh, thank you again, Chair and fellow commissioners. And for all the participating people out there that want to see racing continue, it's good to see your that you're on the line and your voice needs to be heard. In the item I mentioned earlier, I had hoped that the commission would at least answer and address the question at hand, which was, has the commission given the permittee the right to dis discontinue racing at a location as the statute I cited? And if the, I don't recall it being an open forum, so if that question could be answered before the next one, and did the commission then authorize the permittee to transfer racing for those number of days lost to another location? These are statutes that require enforcement, not to just be overlooked. There is an obligation. And I was hoping to get that answer. Maybe we could get that answered uh, moving forward. I don't think that an emergency clause should be because one wants to retire after and after and continuing to receive the benefits of what the permit derives i mean there's many thousands of people that are waiting for you to make decisions on our lives and livelihoods they're not easy decisions you get us for two hours a month well we put lives and livelihoods into an industry please take more consideration it's hard sometimes to do the right thing believe me i know but let's try it's your duty, your obligation to the people of the state of Arizona. And I thank you once again, Commission. Maybe we can move forward very soon with your direction. I appreciate the time. Thank you, sir. We'll drop down to the announcements. <clears throat> Next regularly scheduled commission meeting will be at 10 a.m. on Thursday, October 12th, 2023 at 100 North. 15th Avenue, Suite 202, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and or via Google Meet. That said, I will move that we adjourn. Second. Thank you. With the motion by Chair Coolidge and the second by Commissioner York, I will call roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. Thank you. The time is 11.29 a.m. and this meeting has adjourned. If everyone can please exit out of the meeting. Thank you.